Thank you for joining us once again here at Seaford and Brew for our economic briefing. I am Jamie Sumner, the Chief Analyst, and for this week, we want to just take a, a look at the first quarter GDP as a refresher for our second quarter GDP growth rate that's coming out at the end of this week. And then we're just going to look at some interest rates uh, to, to round this out. But overall, when we recall the first quarter GDP, fairly strong growth, a surprise of 3.1%. We do anticipate that to come down for the second quarter, most likely going to look at a sub 2% GDP number uh, for the second quarter. Overall, we want to keep an eye on where that consumer spending has been going. We've seen some positive numbers on the retail sales coming in a little higher than estimates. So we anticipate that number to uh, contribute a little more. The question is, in that investment portion, will we continue to see the fall off of those residential fixed investments? Most likely, with the numbers that have been coming out, we will see a slight decline. Uh, which would be a continuing that trend that we've seen over the past several quarters. And then the big question is that inventories. Will we see an increase in inventories like we saw last quarter that contributed over 50 basis points to the GDP? So those are the, the two unknowns that we don't know and we want to see uh, how they're going to come out. And we'll have that answer at the end of the week. Government spending, we'll see if that's going to continue to push forward. I believe that it will. And, you know, in light of that, we just saw la last night where the, uh, both portions of Congress and the White House have seemed to come to an agreement on a spending plan, which will uh, help benefit the overall fiscal stimulus over the next several years. And plus, they have... Uh, suspended that debt ceiling so we can take that off the table as a headwind for 2019. And then we'll have to see where that exports imports come into play with all the trade war activity that have, has occurred over the past quarter. But overall when we look at the uh, GDP now put out by the Atlanta Fed we can see their estimate right now it comes in at 1.6% uh, in here. And that's uh, below its high, where it was up closer to about 2.2, or 2.1% in their estimate back in the middle of June. So we'll see how close they get. This tends to be more accurate the closer uh, these numbers are put out to the actual release date of GDP. So should be somewhere around that 1.6% uh, growth rate. Now, when we look at the Fed funds probabilities, we know the Fed is meeting next week and it is anticipated that they will do a rate cut. Uh, we can see the market building in a 25 basis point rate cut at a probability of 81.2 and a 50 basis point rate cut with a probability of 18.5. So we can see that come about. Most likely our estimate is that 25 basis point rate cut unless something comes out uh, fairly adverse in the numbers in terms of the growth rate. If we saw a growth rate um, in the low ones or below one, or we saw inflation really falling off, we, that might push them down into that 50 basis point uh, rate cut. But for now, anticipating just 25 basis points, when we look at looking into the future and the probabilities here, there could be another rate cut in September at a probability of 66.2%, uh, and then also in December, uh, less of a probability, but at a 41.4%. Uh, so we continue to see uh, these rate cuts building over and over into the future. What's interesting is if you look at the yield curve here, uh, 
comparing where we are today, this solid line, with where we were back in 2015 on December 15th, which was the day before they started to raise the Fed funds rate. And we can see the big disparity between the law or the short end of the curve where we had the three month treasury at just 25 basis points compared to where we are today at 2.09. So we had this big disparity. And the expectation here is that over the course of the next 12 months, we're gonna start to see this short end of the yield curve drop down. So we'll see that, that correction on that shorter end reducing down those short-term rates. And we have to take that in consideration when we think about uh, the movements in our deposit rates over the next year. I think we've seen a cap on uh, the CDs. We've already started to see those uh, rates start to come down uh, with the exception of some, some out, outlandish specials that are out there. Uh, but we do start to see that come down. I think uh, the, the non-maturity deposit rates, I believe those are going to be start coming down once the Fed starts its action of reducing the Fed funds rate. I think it'll be maybe a month, two months before we start to see those non-maturity deposits start to filter through and those rates to come down. So it will be interesting second half of this year when we look at the Fed funds uh, rates and we look at just the rates in general, we can see the long end of the curve, even below where we were back in December of 2015 when we started the tightening strategy at the Fed. And uh, our anticipation is that that is going to stay right around where it is. However, there could be some downward momentum on the long end, depending on where the Fed comes out in terms of the placement of their purchase of treasuries starting in October when they begin to run off their mortgage-backed portfolio but reinvest those cash flows into, uh, into the treasury market. So that could put some downward pressure on rates beginning in October. So that's what we have for you today. We look forward to talking to you next week. Got a big week. We have the Fed coming out, and we look forward to sharing that information with you. Have a great week, everyone.